Hi everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here, and today we're going to be covering doing a basic Briggs & Stratton single cylinder engine swap. Most of the Briggs are pretty simple to swap. They've all got basically the same generic wiring harness. The gas lines are usually on the same exact side. The solenoid for shutting off the carburetor usually is the same wiring. So they're pretty simple in order to do a swap on a machine of this nature. So what we're going to do, um, if you're interested in the engine that I'm using for this, I'll actually post a link in the description for the whole unboxing on this along with more info. But this is basically just your generic single cylinder brakes. So I'm going to grab the camera. We're going to do a walk around on the different tools we've got for this job. And then we're going to start doing the job. Um, I'm not going to bother with going over how to remove the um, deck belt and I'm not going to bother going over how to remove the drive belt. If you need more info on that, I'll include two videos in my description on how to do that on one of these Craftsman's. But it's pretty simple and straightforward for the most part. So without further ado, I'm going to grab the camera. now. Those who know my channel, I've got all kinds of tools. Everything and anything you could want for this kind of job. But we're going to do this as if it's a regular standard at home job, you in your backyard wanting to do this. That way, anybody, everybody can do the same exact swap. So let me grab the camera. Let's cover some tools. The first thing you're going to need is definitely ratchet and socket set. Um, as you can see, this is my Craftsman set. It's a 154 piece mechanic tool set. And it serves me well. Um, as you can see, it's been beaten around in every vehicle I've ever owned. And I've almost always been able to fix things. But what I've had to add to the set over the years has been basic pliers. We got Lyman's pliers, needle nose pliers and then adjustable pliers and you'll need these for doing different things um, sometimes the fuel clips are easier to do with these or these and the older style craftsman clips are much easier to do with a pair of Lyman's pliers on the fuel from there you're also probably going to need a screwdriver both a Phillips and a flathead um, you want a couple of different size flatheads because they're good for getting fuel lines off and vacuum lines if you have them on an engine. A couple of random zip ties. I'll show you a few tricks with those later, but they're always good to have. You're going to need torques of a couple of different sizes. Um, a lot of these Briggs, the carburetor mounting, um, I'm sorry, the throttle cable is mounted with a Torx, but you can also use a certain type of metric socket for that. On these Briggs, the exhaust is mounted with a quarter inch Allen. You're going to need a couple of different variations of this, which you can also use these here that go on to a regular ratchet. But some of the time, they won't make it past the heat shield, so I recommend a good quality set of these. The other thing that I recommend for this kind of job is these are usually 20 bucks at AutoZone. There's a bunch of different versions of this, but these will save you so much time. It's phenomenal the amount of time that these things will save you over the years. Well worth it. Hi. So my first recommendation here is actually really, really simple. <clears throat> if you have a smartphone, a digital camera, anything that basically has digital photo capability. Walk around, take photos of every connection. Take photos of everything and anything for connections. That way you've got a record because every machine is different. The solenoid on this is mounted in a different location than it is on other Craftsman's I've worked on and so on. Take the five seconds, take some photos.
Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this hood out of the way. This really isn't necessary, but it makes doing the job so much easier. So, we're going to take this section of wire here and unclip it. And then from there, we're going to grab the hood on each side, tilt it slightly forward, and then lift straight up. And then slightly forward some more, and it comes off. Now at this point, it really doesn't matter what order you do this in, whether you disconnect the wiring harness or whether you do the engine pulley next. I prefer at this point to do the engine pulley just because that makes it much easier to deal with stuff later. Now the engine pulley on this is a standard 5 8 and it goes just regular normal thread direction. What I'm going to recommend though is that you do this before you disengage the deck. Now what you can do at this point is you can engage, engage the deck lever which is going to pull all of the belt tight and that's going to torque down on the pulley and then the next thing you can do is you can reach in underneath from the side grab that deck bolt uh, deck belt and you can actually reef on it from the opposite side in order to lock in the engine pulley and be able to turn things the other thing you can do if you don't have a deck on your machine is you can put a ratchet strap around it and ratchet it off and if you're swapping an engine that still actually has compression you also can take out your spark plug and you can thread a rope up inside and be able to get the piston so it stays. I don't like that method, but a lot of the old timers use it. So we're going to reach in underneath, we're going to grab that belt and hold it, and then we're going to undo the engine pulley. Alright, so this engine pulley ended up being a lot more stuck than I was planning on. So we're going to teach you another trick. Up on the engine pulley when you're looking at it, up in this area near the dry belt pulley, you're going to see there's going to be a cutout for the key that goes onto the shaft. If you get a set of decent sized vice grips, you can actually lock in the front nub of the vice grip onto that key. And then from there be able to turn it. Alright, so as you can see, we've got our vice grips in place. Now let's see what we can do. Olivia, you need to go away from the tractor. So there we go. Got the nut busted out. Now we just gotta take it right out of the engine. Now if you're lucky, the engine pulley and dry and deck pulley will just come loose and drop down off of the engine. But if you're like everybody else, you're going to have to sit there and work it a bit. Alright, part of the reason why I like these Briggs, especially this generation, is the wiring harness is just plain so simple for the engine. It's literally this. You pull that, pull this side, give it a tug, you're done. And then the next part is this off the side of the starter. In this case, it's a 7 16 and be careful, sometimes the starter not going in will actually come loose. Alright, next step at this point is going to end up being the exhaust. The exhaust on these is pretty straightforward, it's just a quarter inch Allen. So from there, depending on how your exhaust is set up, 
Some of them will have a mount tab down on the exhaust um, muffler itself. Others won't. So undo these and then check for a mounting tab down on the muffler. Alright, so now we've switched to the side with the fuel line along with the throttle connection. So we're going <coughs> to do our fuel line first. And one of the tricks to this is rather than draining your tank off into something, if you take a zip tie and you put it up next to the tank, then the moment you pull this off, you lift it up over the top of the tank, and then you don't have to deal with draining the tank. So what I'm going to do is put a zip tie up in a piece of plastic up here. I'm going to undo this and immediately throw it up there and zip tie it in place. Alright, so from here, I like Lyman's pliers for this, because it works nice and easy, but to each their own. If for some reason this is stuck, this is where your flathead comes in. You can press it into this edge and just break the seal just a little bit, and give it a tug. Now we're going to immediately flip it up, and we're going to zip tie it into place. And there we go, almost no spill. Ended up with one tiny dot right there and that's about it. So here on this throttle, if you look right in here, you can see that that is coming up and just about to hit the choke lever. So that's good to note. That's how most of the Briggs are set up if you notice this position. So we're gonna undo this and we're just gonna undo it enough so that we can snap the cable up out of position. Now it's important to note this piece of metal is keyed. There's a little piece that fits down here and you just pull it up and then flip this up through the top. There we go. From there, we're gonna pull it out so it's straight and then pull it out of the clip. There we go. Yeah, go put the socket back where it was. Hi, Dad. Oh, yes, I'm trying to make shoot a video. Huh. Is it burning? Yes. Jeez. That. That. Hi, Johnny. Back off. Okay, at this point. You need to take the four engine mounting bolts out. Okay, at this point, you need to take the four engine mounting bolts out. You're going to need a regular ratchet, a six inch extension, and in this case, these engine bolts are nine sixteenths. So you're gonna have to reach up in underneath. They're a pain in the neck to get to. There's four of them. Pretty self-explanatory. Hi, right, so at this point, I'm about to have anybody and everybody tell me you're doing it wrong, you're not lifting with your legs, you're gonna hurt your back, whatever. The real reality is, this is awkward. And unless you're using a chain hoist to do it right, some ratchet straps, things like that, it's all about brute force and stupid ignorance. Get over it. So, we're gonna grab onto it and lift it. When I have to move one of these, what I usually do is I take my palm and I place it here underneath the front cylinder. I usually take and I place the other hand underneath the starter motor itself and just give her a good lift. <clears throat> now, I'm a computer tech by trade. If I can be strong enough to do it, so can you. From here, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. There's no sense not to since it's right here. And then we're going to throw the new engine on. See how well she fits. <laughs> 